from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on wakeupcalldt.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt, mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt stands for Mix Live Radio. So Mix Live Radio, mixlr.com backslash wakeupcalldt, where you're listening to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We also shoot live video when we do that. It is on facebook.com backslash live now dt. That's facebook.com backslash live now dt. And we also have the opportunity to be on wakeupcalldt.com where you can listen into the show Monday through Friday on the homepage from 9 to 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So, however you're listening, thank you so much for tuning in to the broadcast of Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We are at that part of the show where we will be discussing Syracuse's game that occurred this uh, well last night for those of you that are listening live here. So, the game where Syracuse defeated Louisville at home. Louisville ranks number 18 in the AP and number 22 in the coaches poll. Syracuse needed another quality win. Really, their only big time win is against Duke this season. So, they needed some more to kind of boost that resume. And they got one of those feathers in their cap yesterday when they defeated the Louisville Cardinals, ranked in the top 25. But not only ranked in the top 25, ranks 18 and 22 in the AP and coaches polls, respectively, and defeated them by 20 points. Didn't didn't beat a top 25 ranked team. They demolished a top 25 ranked team. They beat them by 20 points. They only allowed one player on the Louisville team to attain double figures. Only one player, and that was Jordan Nwora, who had nine points at halftime. So the o- there was only one player allowed double figures by Syracuse's 2-3 zone in this game against Louisville. Only one player, and they had eight players that played at least 10 minutes or more. So of those eight players, only one got to double digits and got to double digits by scoring two points in the second half alone. So the only one to get to double digits, Jordan Nwora, had nine at halftime. In the final 20 minutes of the game, Syracuse only allowed him two points. So think about that. Syracuse only allowed one of eight players on Louisville's team that played at least 10 minutes in the game to get to double digits. And that one player that got to double digits only had two points in the second half. So that's good on good on good on good on good on good on good for the Syracuse Orange, who had a tremendous showing inside the Carrier Dome for this game against the Louisville Cardinals. I had the opportunity to speak with O'Shea Brissett, sophomore forward on the team, as well as redshirt junior guard forward Elijah Hughes, senior point guard Frank Howard, and assistant coach Alan Griffin, who's in his second season back at Syracuse. And we're going to start off the conversations with my one-on-one with O'Shea Brissett. This is what O'Shea had to say to me about this game and him getting into double figures, he was the first one to get into double figures on either side. He had 12 points at halftime, the only player at the half to have double digits for Syracuse and Louisville combined. This is what O'Shea had to say about getting started early. Uh, you know, I just feel like I was able to create that spark for the team. Um, you know, I feel like in the second half, I, I really opened it up for the guys like Elijah and, and Buddy and Tyus to get their points uh, because I was the way I was playing in the first half. Um, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to do that game and game out. You know, just play my game, be aggressive. As far as Elijah, Alan Griffin was talking about the fact that he could have hung his head and not shot in the second half after they weren't falling early on, and he stayed after it. Just what you can say about just what he does for you offensively and the fact that you appreciate that he'll keep shooting knowing that it's eventually going to fall. Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone's been able to see what he could do. He gets hot you know, really fast, and I think in the second half he hit three in a row um, coming off you know, kind of a slow first half. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's the shooter he is, and, you know, shooters are going to shoot. Same thing with Buddy. If he's, you know, slow, we want him to keep on shooting uh, because we know he's going to make, make some. So, 
we just want them to keep going, and you know we have full trust in them to do it. Defensively, just what you could say, Jordan Nwora was the only one to have double digits for Louisville, and out of the eight players that played at least ten minutes in the game, he only had two in the second half, though. Just what you can say about the 2-3 zone in this game. Uh, I feel like we did a great job moving and getting up on their shooters. That was the you know main focus of this game. Uh, we knew they were a great offensive team, and uh, we knew we were going to win this game on the defensive end. Uh, it would have been a tough tough game if we were trying to outscore them. So we did a great job getting up on the shooters and you know, taking them off their spots. Lastly, for me, you control your destiny from here and where you go. The teams that you're, that you're playing in the standings are above you, Louisville being one of those teams. Just what you can say about knowing that you're in the driver's seat and you have control of where you go from here. Uh, you know, we want to stay, stay confident, stay poised for every game, uh, treat every game like you know, it's our last, honestly. Uh, we're going to focus on Saturday and only Saturday. And then, you know, after Saturday, whatever happens, win or lose, we're going to focus on Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever we play UNC. So, you know, we're not, we're not trying to think ahead. Uh, we just want to focus on that game and play that game. That conversation coming once again between myself and O'Shea Brissett of the Syracuse Orange men's basketball team. Syracuse defeating the Louisville Cardinals, who came in once again ranked 18th in the AP and 22nd in the coaches' poll and Syracuse defeats them by 20, by 20 points, folks, in this game. Syracuse gets top 25 win in large fashion. Syracuse Orange opened the doors to the Louisville Cardinals for the first time ever with Chris Mack on the Louisville sidelines. Mack coming to the Cardinals from the Xavier Musketeers. So far, Mack has uh, has amounted an 18-8 and record overall and a 9-4 and record inside the Atlantic Coast Conference, along with a top 25 nationally, national ranking in his first season with the Cardinals. That's how they came in. Syracuse unranked, who would be the team at the top most of the first half, however, leading for 15 minutes and 36 seconds of the 20-minute game clock. Louisville, despite having five players who are 30% or better from beyond the arc this season, went one for 13 in the first half from the long range, a mere 7.7%, and Syracuse would take a double-digit lead into the halftime locker room ahead by 12, 35-23. Orange sophomore forward O'Shea Brissett, who you just heard from here on Wake Up Call in our one-on-one conversation, was the lone player on either side to accumulate double, figure, double figures in points in the half, getting as many as the difference in the game between the two teams, 12 points. Sophomore forward Jordan Nwara would lead the Cardinals at the half with nine, as I mentioned before. Both squads were close to the break in second chance points. Louisville with eight and Syracuse with nine. The Cardinals with seven offensive boards and the Orange with six in the first 20 minutes of play. The Cardinals would strike first in the second half with two free throws from redshirt junior forward Dwayne Sutton, followed by a steal and dunk by graduate guard Quan Four. Brissett would get the first points of the second half for the Orange, scoring on a layup to go up by double digits once again, 37-27 at the 17-28 mark. Redshirt junior guard slash forward Elijah Hughes would knock down two deep shots, followed shortly after by two three-pointers by true freshman shooting guard Buddy Bayheim, and then Hughes would connect again to give Syracuse five three-pointers in a span of six minutes and eight seconds. 1340 mark to the 732 mark. Syracuse would advance out to a 56 to 38 advantage with 732 remaining. Brissett's make at the rim with 625 to go would elevate the Orange to a 20 point lead, 58 to 38. Playing with four fouls, sophomore forward Mar- Marek Dolajai went in between two defenders and rose for a finger roll at the rim and completed the old fashioned three point play with the following free throw to provide Syracuse with a 62 to 41 advantage. Beheim would connect on his fourth three of the game and third of the second half with 139 to play. After Hughes' two free throws at the 115 mark that gave the Orange a 67 to 43 lead, head coach Jim Beheim would bring on the walk ons as well as scholarship true freshman forward Robert Braswell to finish the contest. With Syracuse up by 24, Braswell would score the final points for Syracuse after a few came from Louisville, and Syracuse would get their final points at the rim with 21 seconds to go from Robert Braswell, and the Orange would roll over the Cardinals with a 20-point victory, 69-49. to This win gives Syracuse another signature win over a top-25 nationally ranked team and moves the Orange to an 18-8 and overall record and a 9-4 and in-conference record. Louisville dropped to 18-9 and overall and 9-5 and in the ACC helping out Syracuse overall and helping out Syracuse in the ACC against Louisville. The Orange would have four players finish in double figures, Hughes with 18 with all of his field goals coming from three-point range, followed by Brissett with 16 on seven for 15 shooting, Beheim with 14 going five for 10 from the field overall and four for nine from three, and junior shooting guard Tyus Battle amounting 11. 
Of the eight players who were on the court for at least 10 minutes in this game, only one Cardinal scored in double digits, as I mentioned before. That being Jordan Nwara with 11, only two points in the second half. You can read this story and so many of them by going to wakeupcalldt.com. It used to be called the Right Now page. Now it just says Articles. I wanted to be more short and to the point so that people knew exactly where to get the articles. So if you go to wakeupcalldt.com and click on the Articles tab at the top of the page, you will find over 500 articles, including Syracuse Orange Football, which is over 260, and over 160 Syracuse Men's Basketball articles, including Syracuse's top 25 win in large fashion over Louisville that you can go and read right now. As I mentioned, there was a span of time where Syracuse hit five threes in six minutes and eight seconds, Elijah Hughes amounting for three of those five, and I had the opportunity to speak with Elijah about that crucial run and just how important it was in the game. Uh, it was huge. You know, I think that really separated the game with us. And, uh, you know, I want Blaney to shoot the ball every time he thinks he's open and he wants the same for me. So it, that was huge for us. I was speaking with Alan Griffin after the game, and, and he had said that, you know, you had a wide open three early on. He said, you know, Elijah could have put his head between his legs and stopped shooting, but instead you believed in your shot. You kept shooting. You kept getting after it. He said that's what the coaching staff says, just keep shooting, mm-hmm. which is what you can say about, you know, when they don't fall early to make sure that you stay on and try to get those good looks. I think that's why, you know, I love the coaching staff here and all my teammates because they keep me up even when I'm not, you know, making shots to begin with. You know, they always, they always tell me to keep shooting the ball. Keep staying confident and believe in yourself. When we look at a game like this, it's a top 25 win against a nationally ranked team, and, and not only that, but it's late in the season. Just what you can say about how important it was to get a win like this at this point. No, it was huge, you know, for our confidence. We got a tough stretch coming up, you know, to end February and uh, going into March and we're trying to get a few wins and build some confidence. When you know that you have control of your own destiny and teams like Louisville and Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, that are all above you inside of the standings, just how that's you know helped you guys to lock in a little bit more, knowing the fact that you control where you go from here. Um, you know, it's basically it's just time now. You know, we're all in it mentally, uh, trying to stay locked in and. Pretty much just take one game at a time. You know, we don't want to put too much pressure on ourselves. At the end of the day, we're all kids still, and it's just basketball. So, you know, they got to come here, put their shorts on, and lace up just like we can do. So, we're just all playing. We've seen this team win by close to 20 or 20 and, and lose by as much as that. What have you learned from kind of that juxtaposition where you've lost some games by double digits, won games like this one by 20? Just what it's taught the team at this uh, point? No, that's the ACC, number one. You know, teams are going to shoot the ball well and defend well. And uh, on any given night, you could be anybody, but on any given night, everybody could beat you. So, just like I said, just take it one game at a time defensively to see what this team was able to do, you know, your team against Louisville to shut down. They had eight players that played at least ten minutes. Only one of them scored in double figures. That was Jordan Wara. He had nine at the half. He only had two in the second half. Just what you could say about how the 2-3 zone locked into this one. Uh, we were active. You know, we had a week to prepare, and uh, we were just really active. And just what you could say about looking forward to the fact that there is going to be a new record set in the Dome of all the big crowds that there has been here. You guys already know that you're going to be in front of the biggest crowd ever when you have to. It's another game. Uh, There's a lot of excitement around it. That's other people's job to do, the fans, you guys, stuff like that. And um, We're just going to try to, you know, it's a regular game. They come here and play. And how do you shut out the noise? How do you, whether you're at home or away, how do you just kind of lock in? Uh, It's hard to, but, you know, we just... You just got to try your best, you know, just just play. That's it, just play. We're all, we're all coming here to play. You know, it's just a game, and uh, we're going to try to just do what we got to do to win. Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortori. You just heard from Elijah Hughes. Elijah Hughes with some big-time threes in this game and just keeping with it. And you heard me speak with him on Alan Griffin. You're going to hear what Alan Griffin had to say uh, right now. Alan Griffin had uh, stated with me in this conversation, and you're going to hear it, just what he has to say about not hanging your head and, Keep taking the shot and believing in your shot. Here's Alan Griffin, assistant coach of the Syracuse Orange. After the game where they defeated Louisville by 20, that said to him, not only a top 25 win, but late in the season, just what this means to the team at this point in the season, to get that top 25 win, do it late in the season for the what have you done for me lately when the NCAA selection committee is watching, what his thoughts are getting a win like this right now. Man, it just gives us a, a chance to breathe a little bit, uh, knowing that we got a big game coming up on Saturday and, you know, the rest of the way. They're all big games, uh, and it started with this one tonight. I was just happy for our guys. The guys executed the game plan. They played really well. Uh, and defensively, they were tremendous. 
not just a victory over a top 25 ranked Louisville, but by 20 points. Just what you can say about a statement like that. I'll be honest with you. I, because we played so well, obviously it's, it, the game turned out to be 20. Louisville is a really good team. We just didn't care. We, we wanted just to win by one point. So you look at this game and just what it says about the team that, you know, there is this Duke game that's looming in the background and that they didn't look past it and that yeah. they took care of business. That was never a question, never in my mind, just because um, we were focused on this game tonight. We knew that we had a really good Louisville team coming in and we had to really focus on them because if we didn't focus on what we had to do to, you know, prepare for them, we wouldn't have never beat them. So. Uh, it was never a, a, a thing in my mind that we would focus on Duke and, and, and overlook Louisville. There was a stretch of about six minutes where Elijah Hughes hit three threes and Buddy hit two of them. Just what you can say about how big that stretch of time was? I mean, we see it in practice. Uh, we just, you know, we just wanted to see it in games now. And uh, the one thing that coach was encouraging those guys to, if you open, shoot the ball. You know, just play. Don't think about nothing. We'll take the results at the end. And, uh, and that's what happened. Uh, and I, I just, I'm happy for him, you know, because Elijah could have put his head between his legs because he missed his first three, you know, and they were wide open shots. So, I mean, we just got to, again, just go out there, have the confidence just to lay it on the line and just shoot it, let it go. And then finally at Jordan Nuora, they had uh, eight guys that played at least 10 minutes in the game. Jordan Nuora was the only guy to get to double figures, and it was with 11. Just what you can say about because you mentioned defense just shutting them down. Well, you know what? Uh, our zone was active, and I know if we have an active zone, it doesn't matter who we're playing against, uh, it'll bother some people. And uh, Noir's a great player. Uh, he's, you know, he, he, you know, he has the stats for like player of the year type stuff, and uh, uh, we just did a great job of knowing where he was in the zone and, and making him take tough shots. Uh, he was, he's a really good player, and you know what? Tonight wasn't his night just because we play really active defense. There's a lot of records that have been set in the Dome. A new one's going to be set this weekend against Duke. Just what you can say about the atmosphere. You know, I'm just happy for our fans that they to come out and see a really good basketball game. That coming once again from Alan Griffin, assistant coach of the Syracuse Orange, following the game where Syracuse defeated the Louisville Cardinals by 20, 69 to 49. Of my conversations after the game, you heard from Elijah Hughes and O'Shea Brissett. You just heard from Alan Griffin, the assistant coach. Alan and I will be at our post at Home Team Pub. <laughs> God bless me. I have sneezed more times in six months on live radio than I have in 16 years. Seriously. I don't know what it is. There's... <laughs> Serious. I can't... <laughs> That's God. God bless me twice. That's God's humor. He's like, oh, yeah, you're going to talk about sneezing, the uncontrollable thing that you can't... Okay, I'm going to make you do it again. So, yeah, sneezing on air. I guess it's a thing now in Wake Up Call. So, thank you for being a part of the broadcast you heard from Alan Griffin. Alan Griffin and I will be at our normal post at the Home Team Pub. We're there twice a month with the Alan Griffin Hour, and the next show is going to be February 28th, this coming Thursday, February 28th, a week from today, and we'll be there from 7 to 8 p.m. So come out and see the Alan Griffin Hour from 7 to 8 p.m. on Thursday, February 28th at Home Team Pub on 7990 Oswego Road in Liverpool, where we're talking Syracuse basketball. Frank Howard is next up on the docket here, and Frank and I had an opportunity to speak on getting a win, but not just any victory, winning by 20 over a top 25 team. This is his reaction to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big statement for the team, you know, when we probably need it at this point in the year for, you know, in March, times around March, so, you know, definitely a confidence builder, you know, we got to build off this momentum uh, going to Saturday. It can be anybody on any given night. You didn't have a ton of minutes in this game. But just what you could say about the leadership on the sidelines and this being about, you know, not a bunch of individuals but being about a team. Yeah, I mean, simple as that. You know, it's not about you. It's about the, about the team, you know. So I got to, uh, you know, contribute any way I can. So, you know, that's just where I'm at with it. Uh, you know, if I'm on the sideline, then, you know, I got to let my voice be heard. Uh, you know, still talk to the guys and uh, do stuff like that. Alan Griffin said that Elijah Hughes could have put the, his head between his legs after he missed a, an open three early on in the game. He didn't do that. He reacted by continuing to shoot and believing that that was going to drop. He hit three threes, and Buddy hit two of them in a stretch of about six minutes in the second half. Just what you can say how big that run was. Uh, it was a good run. Uh, great run, actually. You know, when we can get our shoes open and shots uh, of that nature, you know, when they're stepping in and getting a uh, good rhythm, you know, that's, uh, that's what we want. You know, that's what we're looking for. So, you know. Oh, we're telling them, telling them the same thing as coach, you know, keep shooting, uh, you know, step into your shots and be confident. So that's, that's what it did. 
Marek, playing with four fouls, goes to the basket in between defenders for a finger roll and then makes the free throw after. Just what you can say about you know how he was playing with that tenacity at the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, you know, he won the game for us. Uh, you know, his, his, his aggression early, you know, attacking, even getting those fouls out, out on the perimeter, you know, opening things up. So, you know. When he plays like that, you know, I think that changes our team. You know, we can get five guys attacking the five guys, you know, with the ability to do something, uh, you know, that's when we're dangerous. Defensively, you guys locked them down. They had eight players that played at least ten minutes in the game, and only one of them was in double figures. Jordan Awara had nine in the first half, only two in the second half. He ends with 11. Nobody else gets in double digits. Just what you can say about the active defense tonight. Uh, yeah, we knew our assignments. Uh, you know, coming off a game where we didn't defend the whole game, so, you know, we want to make a statement on that. And you know, first, first and foremost, and uh, you know, after that, I let the offense follow, and uh, you know, that's what happened. You never looked past this game to Duke with all of the media that's around that. Just what you can say about treating each game as an important game and not going past Louisville, knowing that Duke was coming up next. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, it's different when you you playing. You know, you you're not watching the game, so you know, you're more locked into what you're doing. You know, and uh, it's. I mean, you, it's almost like you, you, you can watch the media and you can watch other teams if you want. You know, if you can look down the schedule if you want, you know, that's when you'll get beat. You know, simple as that. No matter who you are, uh, you'll get beat. So, you know, that's something we're not going to do. You know, we're not going to look past our games. You know, we're going to take every game like, like it's the last and, uh, you know, just keep that going. You've seen some big crowds. There's a new record that's going to be set on top of all these records that have already been set at the Dome. Which is what you can say about knowing that the fans have already established the fact that this is going to be a new record. Yeah, um, I don't know if scary the right, the right word, but that's, you know, <laughs> that noise, you know, I, I never thought it could get any louder. So, you know, but we're ready, we're excited, you know, we'll be used to it, um, you know. It'll be a little bigger gym, you know, than the camera. So, you know, it'll be a little louder. Hopefully, you know, we can come out with a win, you know, and play confident and uh, play with the crowd.